In the last video, we created this helicultural garden bed, and now it's time to go through the preparation process of some asparagus crowns, get them into the ground, and see how they grow throughout the season. Now, here I'm showing an image of something entirely optional, but when I can, I like using these additions when starting out new perennial plants in the garden. It's a mycorrhizal fungi inoculant with various different species. So the premise is that by using a product like this on the roots of a new transplant, it establishes a colony of fungi along the root structure of the plant, which facilitates that plant's uptake of nutrients and water, thereby creating more robust plants more quickly. This particular brand is a powder concentrate, which is used at a ratio of one teaspoon of powder per two gallons of water. The solution can be used as a soak for bare root plants before transplanting, as well as simply watered in at the base of the plant right after putting them into the ground. To prepare a soaking solution for the bare root asparagus crowns, I measured out one teaspoon of the inoculant and mixed in just enough water to thoroughly dissolve it and avoid the powder clumping up. I poured the solution into a bin wide enough to hold the crowns in a stretched out position and then added more water to reach the two gallon mark. The Beirut asparagus crowns I had ordered arrived in a cardboard box in a dormant state, and they also arrived before I had finished the asparagus bed. It's very important that the crowns not be left to dry out entirely or they'll die. So I laid them out enveloped over moistened rags and stored them in plastic bags to lock in the moisture. The crowns will begin to wake out of dormancy in these conditions though, so my advice is to make sure that you have your planting space ready within two weeks maximum of storing the crowns in this way. One by one, I transferred each crown into the container and laid them best I could to keep the roots submerged in the water while keeping the crown above the water. You can see here, new white root fibers forming on the main roots. A sure way to identify that the asparagus is no longer in dormant and now actively growing, which is why you want to get them into the ground as soon as possible after you get your crowns, so to avoid damage and more stress as the plants seek to establish themselves in your new home. To keep all the roots submerged, I need to add just a little bit more water, and I let them soak for at least about one hour. Also, make a note here that while I was using tap water, I always make sure to leave tap water sitting out for at least 24 hours to allow the chlorine to evaporate. I designed this bed to accommodate three rows lengthwise with seven asparagus crowns for the longer center row and six crowns each on the outside rows for a total of 19 plants. I proceeded by using a garden trowel to remove about six inches of soil depth out of the way in the center to make space for bearing the crown roots. Note also that I tied a string lengthwise across the bed so that I could place tape on it as markers above the spots where I'd be planting the seven crowns in this row. This ensured that I'd maintain even spacing between the plants. Directly beneath each tape marker, I used my hands to pile up a bit of the soil to form a convex shaped mound. The next mildly challenging part was detangling the roots of each crown so that I could spread the roots out evenly over the mound. Once that was done, I'd cover up the roots with soil, right up to just slightly above the height of the asparagus crown. Then I would repeat this entire process for each remaining plant along all three rows. With the most time consuming planting part out of the way, it was time to water everything in. I made sure to add the inoculant soaking solution to my watering can to further drench these plants with more inoculant. The final part of this setup was to apply mulch over the bed. In this instance, I opted for laying down an even layer of chunks of rehydrated coconut wire because it was something I already had on hand and was ready to use. Although it was only enough for a thin half inch layer and ideally, I would have preferred at least one to two inches because it takes at least that much to adequately prevent water evaporation from the soil beneath during those hot summer days. In any case, at the end of the season, this is a mulch material I can easily incorporate into the top layer of soil. But now, let's fast forward about nine weeks and see what kind of growth took place. I was giddy with excitement when I initially saw the fresh asparagus spears shooting up through the ground and seeing that all 19 plants survived their transplanting. 
And that excitement turned into surprise when I observed some of these crowns producing almost 10 shoots wanting to push into the light. As they gained height, I saw that it was necessary to attach to the bed a few stakes with strings to form a supporting perimeter for the foliage, as it doesn't stand up well to strong winds. Almost six weeks after that, the amount of branched, feathery foliage became copious, and most of the plants were pushing out over 10 shoots each. With so much upward growth, I regretted not having harvested some of the young shoots before they became woody. I had just never anticipated this much robust growth out of two-year-old crowns. Another thing I noticed was that in such a dense bush of ferns, aphids had begun a massive invasion. However, this didn't seem to negatively impact the vegetative growth of the plants. What it did accomplish was attract ladybugs to the scene of the action, and they began to reproduce. A lot. For the rest of the season. I wasn't complaining. Now, fast forward to the beginning of November, and you can see how the foliage has changed during the progression of autumn. The green luster has vanished, growth has ceased, which means it's time to cut back all of this bush right down to the base and ready the garden bed for overwintering. Check out the ladybug activity though. There are hundreds of them in all stages of development. The ferocious larva, chill out pupae, and the jovial adults. Check this out too. While the Guelph Millennium asparagus variety I ordered was supposed to be an all-male plant, it turns out there were some females in the bunch, or hermaphrodites. The advantage of all-male plants is that they're more vigorous producers since they don't need to spend any energy on creating seeds. In any case, these seeds didn't reach maturity, all this bush is being removed, and I'm beyond pleased with the performance of this very cold-tolerant asparagus variety. I had to tackle this bush bit by bit, using bypass pruners to remove the upward growth first. I bundled everything I cut into a very tight bushel and tied it up with string. I planned to leave this bushel just sitting over the fire pit during the long cold season, let it be covered by snow, and have it remain as a potential habitat for the ladybugs to overwinter, and then hopefully easily repopulate the garden again come spring. I might not have done this if I suspected asparagus beetles were also nesting here, but I saw only one during the summer and it met its timely demise between the palms of my hands. The next thing to do was remove the wire mesh barriers I put in place as squirrel deterrents and cut what's left of the woody stems right down to the soil level. Notice here along the perimeter of the garden bed, the soil has sunk down and left the surface edges caved in a bit. This is common for a first year bed designed in this hugo culture fashion because all the layers are still settling and the many small empty spaces within the bed are folding in on themselves. To remedy the depressions on the surface, I just used some soil I had laying around to fill in those gaps. Now it's time to top dress the bed with unfinished compost that I created throughout the summer months. I've done this for years on most of my garden beds and every time spring rolls around, all this organic matter has almost entirely disintegrated and become part of the top layer of nutrient-rich soil, thanks to all the winter erosion through freezing, snow, and rain. I applied a generous layer of this unfinished compost and then followed up with another generous layer of shredded leaf mulch, which will serve as the top most protective layer for the next growing season. The mulch layer is so helpful because not only does it prevent the evaporation of water from the garden bed, which by the way, I probably only watered this garden bed three or four times the entire summer, but it also makes so easy to pull out pernicious weeds that fail to attach strong roots. And weeds are plentiful in this corner of my garden, as the wind readily blows them in from the surrounding yards. I restored the metal protection screens and called this operation a success. After what will be a very long, cold and snow drenched winter season, when spring rolls around, I look forward to my first harvest of fresh young asparagus shoots.